I have already explained what is uh, sales area in the previous topic. Now let us go to define shipping condition. Sorry, define sh uh, shipping point and define shipping condition. I would like to use this um, slide here to actually explain both the concepts shipping condition and shipping point this is shipping condition and shipping point is over here because both the uh, concepts are interrelated and I cannot uh, explain them uh, individually but I will explain how to set them up individually that's why I have divided into two topics but when I am explaining the concept I need to use a single slide and explain about both the concepts ok let's start now let me go to shipping condition before I start explaining the concept let us understand these three questions first why do we need a shipping point and a shipping condition the reason is using shipping point and shipping condition we can actually adhere to two to three important uh, requirements the first one is uh, we can adhere to the delivery speed as required by the customer what this means is that um, different customers will have uh, different uh, delivery speed requirement for different methods products we might be selling about 10 products to uh, a customer but he may want to define different delivery speed for each and every product that can happen probably he wants uh, some important products ASAP and he's willing to bear the cost and let's say product A B and C he wants it uh, very urgently and the remaining products he can uh, wait for a few weeks or even one month to accept delivery okay as soon as possible means immediate and uh, over here within one month is two different delivery speed I have defined here but don't worry about this I'll explain this step by step let us understand these three uh, requirements first <coughs> so when the customers define their uh, required delivery speed for each and every product we must be able to define this delivery speed in our system in our SAP system so that uh, when the sales document is created when the sales document is created to enter the order from the customer everything is automated in, in a such a way that the system will know from which uh, from which uh, part of uh, embarkation the goods should be delivered so we may have uh, different ports we may have agreement with different ports to send our goods and ship it to international customers or we even deal with uh, airports so we have a uh, sea ports and airports together in our supply chain management and we have agreement with all these ports to deliver goods but uh, we can't be uh, the, the the sales clerk who is uh, will not be able to define uh, manually which port of embarkation that we sh he or she should choose at the time of sales order creation he will not have enough time or you know in other words, uh, he will not have uh, sufficient information at the time of sales order creation to actually specify which port he is supposed to choose to deliver the goods at the time of sales order creation. So in any advanced system like SAP, there must be an automated way to actually derive the final port of um, shipping automatically when when the sales order is created 
uh, information like uh, product and the plan from which the product should be delivered can be entered by the uh, sales clerk but information like which port should be used to ship the goods should be able to automatically derive by the system so in other words with the minimum information given in the sales order so your system should be able to derive the best port of embarkation for the goods so this is what we are trying to achieve so the best port of embarkation will be determined based on these three requirements the delivery speed whether the customer wants it urgently or not for example if the customer is willing to wait for one month there's no reason why we need to use uh, an airport to actually ship the goods we can actually use a cargo ship to actually ship the products so the port of embarkation for this uh, speed requirement which is one month will be a seaport instead of an airport or uh, in other words on the other hand if the customer wants the product uh, ASAP uh, via FedEx or things like that uh, we need to use uh, an airport of course so in that case the system should be uh, able to propose an airport as a shipping point instead of a seaport so these are different speed requirement that we are talking about which uh, the customer should tell us in advance so that will be taken care by setting up this uh, shipping point and shipping condition and the second requirement that will be taken care of is is the loading requirements of the products what I mean by loading requirements for example um, a different product will require different kind of uh, equipments to actually move them from the warehouse to the ship or uh, an airplane so um, for example very heavy uh, uh, products like cars and heavy machineries cannot be lifted by a mere forklift it requires a crane to actually move from one place to another so those kind of products must be lifted using cranes and some uh, light and to medium weight uh, products can be lifted using a simple forklift so these are the uh, different loading requirements required by the products so how does it uh, contribute to the determination of the uh, port of embarkation is for example the cranes which are used in this port port of Takamo in New York uh, probably is very expensive and is very very uh, unbearable for the customer to bear the shipping cost so they may want to recommend uh, a different port which is charging lesser for the cranes so if a product requires strictly requires a crane like a car or heavy machinery instead of shipping them through port of Tecamo we may want to ship them through port of new york because the crane charges at port of new york is far lesser than the port of Tacoma. this would be a smart uh, decision or move by both the customers and the company itself to actually uh, choose the cheapest crane services and ship the products through that port so that's item number two to adhere to the loading requirements of the products and that's only the cost part that we are talking about actually that cost part should uh, be spoken at this uh, point number three but I have spoken about it earlier but uh, to actually explain a better example which is um, precisely suits this second requirement for example let's say our product requires a forklift in order to load it into that ship and uh, port of New York doesn't have a forklift it has only cranes for example uh, this is just, just for example so obviously in the, in the real life port of New York will have forklifts but in our example 
let's assume that port of New York doesn't have a fork leaf and if our product requires a fork leaf crane will be too big for the product even if you try to move the product using cranes it might break so may we may not want to use cranes for that so based on the loading requirement of a product which is fork leaf the system should be able to suggest port of Tacoma as a shipping point so it will be a good decision to actually ship it through port of Tacoma if the, our product is going to use fork leaf alright so <coughs> the the third requirement is to adhere to the delivery cost which I have already explained just now um, probably the, 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 the customers do not want to pay very high cost for the cranes and so happen that the port of New York has got the cheapest crane uh, fees in uh, New York so we may want to use port of New York so the system should be able to actually suggest shipping point as port of New York in the sales order when we enter the product so once all this information is saved in the sales order where as I told you earlier the clerk will enter the, m the, the least possible information which is the material and the plan from where the goods must be shaped the system will automatically derive the shipping point be it port of New York, port of Tacoma or, or Massachusetts uh, port and save it in the sales order in one of the field so uh, how is how is it going to be benefitable for the company by having determined the correct shipping point the SD module <coughs> has got a very important report called shipping list which can be printed by the warehouse people to actually uh, uh, prepare the goods to be shipped pick up from the respective uh, warehouse location and send it to the correct port of embarkation so from the shipping list report we can actually determine what are the goods that needs to be picked up from which plant and to where they are supposed to be shipped to okay so since the sales of sales document has already got the shipping point determined and saved together it is quite natural for the ship, uh, shipping list to contain the port information so that the warehouse uh, people will know where to send the goods to for further packing and shipping so that's the uh, main benefit of uh, determining the shipping point automatically in the sales order <coughs> okay now let's look at the uh, how should I say the logical representation of what we have discussed just now all right I have already told you that um, when the sales order is created the system will be able to determine the shipping point automatically so how the system will know which shipping point to be saved or to be determined in the sales order this is using the shipping condition that is defined as a sales document type or the customer master data sales view because the trigger point for shipping point determination shipping point is the 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 port the actual port from where the goods should be shipped the trigger point for the shipping point is the shipping condition because this is the the delivery requirement of the customer is the main trigger point to actually decide which port should be used to ship the goods so once an agreement has been reached with the customer we actually specify the shipping uh, condition in the customer master data which is on the sales view let me show that to you now I've already opened that up so this is a sample customer this is not the customer that we are going to use this uh, customer from the IDA system this customer this sales organization distribution channel division and you click on this shipping tab before that 
let me show you how I came to this place here let me quit I enter customer company code and for information this is a T code XD03 company code 1000 and I click OK I come to this tabs initially probably it will be defaulted with uh, general tab and you have to click on the sales area tab so just bear that in mind or if you are on the company code data you just click on the sales area data so that you can come here then you can click on the shipping and can you see this shipping conditions all right this is where you can actually define what type of delivery requirement is required by the customer however um, as you may have already been uh, wondering we do not have an option to actually specify different shipping condition for different products that the customer uh, will be buying we can only specify one shipping condition which is applicable for all the products that this customer might be buying because there's no material field where I can select and assign the shipping condition accordingly so I have to assign a shipping condition at the customer level so I cannot add another level where the buy the material so whatever shipping condition that I'm going to specify here as soon as possible the delivery speed will be applicable to all the products that the customer is going to buy so this is a limitation that you should uh, be aware of now this is what I mean by customer master data so we can define the shipping condition this shipping condition in the customer master data and the other place where I can define the shipping condition is at the sales document type let me show you that over here sales doc document type is uh, will be covered in detail when we come to the creation of sales quotation sales order and things like that but before that just for your knowledge when I when I see sales document type this is what it means just pick up any sales document type and let me show you the shipping condition yeah I can specify the shipping condition with the sales order data sales order type so this is what I mean by that so what is the difference by specifying this uh, SD condition type sorry shipping condition ta shipping condition in the sales document type and shipping condition as a customer master data so which one is better and which one will supersede the other this is an important question all right so since you have two places to define the shipping conditions I must tell you the shipping condition which is defined at the sales document type level will supersede the shipping condition which is defined in the customer master data so it has got a higher priority than the shipping condition determined in the sales area data okay sales area data for the customer so the shipping condition that you are going to specify in the sales order type which is this this one will have a higher priority than the shipping condition that you can specify in the sales area data of the customer all right so it's up to you at which level you want to define the shipping condition in now let us look the two different shipping condition I have used in my example as I explained to you earlier if the customer is willing to wait uh, for at least one month to receive the goods then we can define two uh, shipping condition one is uh, as soon as possible and the other one is within one month you can define the shipping condition over here 
all right I'll show that to you later and uh, bear in mind that the shipping condition that uh, you'll be defining here will be independent from any particular plan as you can see here I have uh, SC which is stand which stands for shipping condition 01 and as soon as possible if I double click on it nothing comes out so there's no way I can specify a plant so it's independent of the plant I define this as the very high level at the company uh, at the client level so so that the same shipping condition can be used for different plants plant New York or plant uh, Washington so based on the plant that is specified in the sales order uh, the goods will be taken out from the particular plant and shipped to the customer so as I told you earlier I must be able to specify or group the products based on the different loading groups that is required as I said earlier if uh, as I said to you earlier if the product requires forklift then we must be able to group the products or materials uh, to define which product requires uh, what type of uh, machinery to load them into the shipping so that's why we have the loading group let me show you where we can define the loading group this is where we we can define the loading group it's in the same place let me take you there crane forklift manual as I told you earlier is a simple definition if I double click nothing pops up so there's no way you can specify a plant specific loading group you can specify a loading group for applicable for all the plants and uh, let us see how can we define the loading groups in the material master record it is over here I've already selected a uh, uh, material this material here this is a sales material so let's enter only for uh, material which are sold you can see these additional tabs here sales tab because it does not make sense to actually have these uh, views for raw materials because we do not normally sell raw materials we only sell finished goods so this sample material here is actually finished good is from the IDES company 1000 so let's look at this you need to enter the plan IDES plan and sales organization just select this Oh, it's not IDES plant. Let me choose. It's uh, some other plant. Okay, it's okay. All right. The loading group should be available in one of these sales tabs. It's not available there. Let's go here. It's not available here. Ah, it's available over here. Sales general plant, and over here. So for different plan you can specify different loading group. So this is where we define the loading group which we define here. Alright. So let us go back to the slide. So I've already shown you how to define a loading group for each plan and assign them to the material master. Sorry, I mean the definition of loading group is not by plant. It is defined independent of the plant as you can see here oh, not this one let me close this over here it is independent of the plant I have not specified any plant so once we define it independent of the plant when we assign it to the material master that is the time we can specify it by the plant let me go to that material over here 
so when I assign the loading group to the material I can specify it by the plant so I can define a different loading group for a different plant for the same material so this is where you specify the loading group on this tab here so now when my product sales product is to use uh, a forklift so in the material I need to sp uh, specify that the loading group forklift probably I need to choose uh, this 0002 and then assign it here so that the system will know that uh, product requires a forklift to be loaded to the ship or plane okay this is how the system will know which port of embarkation to be proposed in the sales order later on when the sales clerk uh, selects the particular product in the sales order based on the loading group defined for the product the system will know that that particular product requires a forklift so it will start looking for a port which has been defined to use the forklift okay I'll show that to you later let's understand this first okay the same thing has been uh, exp uh, done for shipping as soon as possible so let us get into action by defining our shipping condition and sales order determination let me change this define shipping condition let me add one more topic here concepts of shipping point determination and I will save this video under this topic define shipping condition shipping and point and then define shipping point determination okay so once we set up the loading group and shipping point and uh, and the shipping condition we must be able to link all these three uh, objects shipping condition loading group and shipping point in a table so that we can uh, represent this logic in SAP so which table can we use let us go back to loading groups go back here this is a table assigned shipping points that we can use to actually link all three objects shipping condition SE stands for shipping condition LGRP stands for loading group and the plan is plant and the shipping point is here this field is actually a shipping point so shipping condition loading group and shipping point is linked in this table shipping condition loading group and shipping point so this is the table which will represent this logic you can see the plant here the plant is over here the shipping point is over here alright I'll cover that in detail when we come to define shipping point determination now